Hey, welcome to this week's edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we are on a mission to go check out a collection of over 100 sleds. But the cool thing is, they're all for sale for one price. Then this Ranger is headed into the shop to get it set up for towing. We've got Polaris's Matrix 850 up on deck for afterburn. And I've got a brand new triple sled I'm gonna tell you about. So let's hit the start button on this show right now. TV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 55 years. Tough, smart, capable. The midsize truck segment is absolutely exploding with vehicles like the Ranger here behind me. But not only is it exploding in the Ford lineup, but also across all truck manufacturers. Basically, these vehicles are the perfect option for buyers who don't need a full-size truck, but still want an open-air pickup box just without the full-size size. Trucks in this class like the Ranger are built on sturdy ladder frame chassis just like their bigger half-ton brothers. This provides a stronger platform to stand up to the full-size demand of truck users, whether that use is for work, play, or towing. The Ford Ranger has one of the biggest tow ratings in this class at 7,500 pounds, which means it's technically capable of hauling that big snowmobile trailer back there. But before we can haul anything at all, we gotta get it into the shop and add a few things to set it up for towing. When towing anything as substantial as a trailer with a 7,000 pound GVWR or a gross vehicle weight rating like our four place, it means you'll need to set up the tow vehicle properly with a receiver hitch and electric brake controller. In fact, anything with a GVWR over 2,000 pounds will probably have brakes on it, most likely electric, and you will need the controller to set them off properly. Mid-size trucks in this class may or may not come with an integrated brake controller. For the Ranger here, you can get it with a tow package, but the brake controller is something that's going to be installed at the dealership level. Now, you can go to a box store and get one of these brake controllers, but this is not going to integrate into the system, and really it's not going to do you any good at all. So I'm going to go with the one recommended by Ford. However, I'm going to install it myself because I like a challenge. While I work to install the electric brake system, I wanted to talk about pairing up trucks and trailers in this class. And even though, with the brake controller and hitch installed, the Ranger will be technically and legally capable of towing our big four-place enclosed trailer, I feel the truck is somewhat undersized for the physical size of the trailer. The dynamic loads, like crosswinds on trailers this big, especially in potentially bad winter road conditions, are better suited to the physically larger half-ton and up classes. However, if the trailer was smaller in physical size, like a two-place version with the same GVWR, this mid-size truck class would be a great option. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to drive all kinds of over-the-road vehicles, everything from small sports cars all the way up to transport trucks. So when I talk about choosing the right size vehicle to do the job, I feel I'm somewhat experienced enough to give an opinion. Too often I see people undersizing or better yet, underestimating the capabilities of their vehicles, especially when it comes to trailering. 
Here there's no hard and fast rule to tell you that you should or shouldn't load your ride up to its maximum or go with some sort of a percentage of its capabilities, such as saying a truck like the Ranger should only tow a trailer with less than 80% of its GBWR. All the manufacturers have vehicles capable of towing, snowmobiles in our case, that range from small SUVs all the way up to huge one-ton haulers and beyond. So there is something for everyone in just about every budget, but it is up to you to evaluate your needs and put a rig together that just doesn't get the job done, but gets it done safely. I also suggest to err on the side of caution and slightly overspec both your trailer and tow rig. Doing so will ensure you have the power when you need it, the right suspension systems to control the vehicle and its load, and then more than enough brakes to bring it all to a stop. All right, so that's it for the brake controller installation, and it is really nice to have something so small on the dash, not some big, ugly box bolted to the bottom of the steering column here. So now all that's left to do is go to the back of the truck, finish up some more wiring, install my plug, and get hitched. This truck wasn't ordered with the tow package, so I have to install the hitch along with the seven pin trailer connector and corresponding wiring harness that's required for trailers equipped with brakes. This truck was purchased off the lot, and this upgrade is a simple one, but if possible, details like this can be included right from the factory if you order the truck properly the way you want. The hitch itself is the easiest part of this installation and uses the same four bolts holding the rear bumper on. The only thing you have to be careful about here is supporting the bumper until it's bolted back on with the new hitch. So with that job done, all that's left to do with this Ranger is go hook it up to the trailer outside and go find some snow. We're getting closer to that vintage collection, but first coming up after the break, we've got Polaris's brand new Matrix 850 VR1 up in Afterburn. This portion of STV is brought to you by Ford, built Ford tough. Each year there's always one sled that seems to stand out above the others. And some years this sled stands out by a bunch, other years, not so much. But for 2021, there is no question which is the standout sled above them all. And it's Polaris's brand new Matrix VR1. The Matrix platform, and in particular the VR1 edition like this one, take the Polaris ride experience to the next level. During development, Rozo left no detail untouched to optimize absolutely everything with this new sled, and it shows. Everywhere you look, from the new bodywork to hand grips, there have been improvements. Obviously the new bodywork is the most noticeable when you first feast your eyes on the Matrix. Now in pictures this thing looks pretty good, but in person it's absolutely stunning. Now to begin with, the new bodywork is wrapped much tighter on the chassis, but despite this, it's been sculpted to flow the air around you as a rider, giving you much better wind protection when compared to the old Axis platform. As you look around the body, you can begin to pick out the subtle details that have been elegantly built in to produce that pocket of air that you ride in behind the bars. And it's not marketing hoopla either. It is absolutely noticeable at speed. Sitting here in the captain's chair, it's like you've taken the blue pill and become part of the matrix. I mean, your lower half just clicks into this thing. This intuitive riding position is also helped out by a console that's now 4.8 inches narrower than the axis. And this also brings your kneecaps three inches closer together as well. This promotes effortless body English inputs that have an immediate impact on handling. On the snow, flat cornering doesn't even begin to describe the carving ability of the matrix. Of course, the Axis was one of the best in the business when it came to ride and handling, and everything Polaris baked into that chassis, they put into the Matrix, only here it's better because of how you ride it. Looking a little closer to the snow, the VR1 option gets you Walker Evans velocity shocks on both ends of the machine and the middle. Then there's the familiar race IFS leading the way out front, and the proven Pro CC rear suspension out back. Now both of these suspensions will look very familiar to their Axis versions, but have been tweaked for the Matrix. Another holdover from the Axis is the same 850 Patriot engine that's in this particular Matrix. We've come to absolutely adore this ripper of a mill in past sleds, and we feel the same here. 
Now there is a new 650 option as well, but that will be for another burn. Paired to the Matrix, the 850 is all we've come to expect out of the Patriot power plant, but with the improved riding position, just like everything else with this sled, it's dialed to 11. From the initial throttle tip-in, the 850 will pull hard right past the C-note, or backshift with pleasing effect when pulling the trigger out of a corner. Then the whole shebang can be perfectly slowed up with the new stealth braking system. The VR1 also integrates some of the most in-depth technology we see on the snow with their exclusive 7S display. Glove friendly, this system can be configurable to display the vital gauge information that you choose. And it's also Bluetooth enabled to pair with your phone so you can listen to music or make phone calls if you have a communication device on your helmet. It's also loaded with Polaris Ride Command that connects your ride group together and delivers extensive GPS data right to the display. In addition, the smart warmers for the heated grips and throttle are controlled here. This is a new system exclusive to Polaris that they developed to precisely set the temperature of your hand heaters. This system even recognizes that if one side is cooler than the other, it'll send more power to that side to compensate. I swear, this system is smarter than I am. The 2021 Matrix takes Polaris to a whole new level in the snowmobile industry with the amount of improvements and refinements that they've made to this model. Now the old Axis was and still is an excellent snowmobile that everyone here at OSM and STV absolutely loved riding. But the reality is that old Axis just got swallowed up by the Matrix. Stick around because after the break I'm going to tell you about my new triple that I'm calling the SCSI. This portion of STV is brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. So recently I managed to add to my 12 cylinder collection. Up on the shelf there, I've got my 1990 Indy 650, which I've had forever. Then last season, I acquired this Yamaha SRX. And for this year, a 1999 Mach Z has followed me back to the shop and I've nicknamed it the SCSI. <laughs> so at this point, I'm three quarters of the way to my classic triple set. I think a one liter T-Cat might round out this collection nicely, but that'll be for later. Right now, let me tell you about the SCSI. This sled kind of fell in my lap. I was telling a buddy I was looking for something like this and he hooked me up with another friend who had this machine. Now, it wasn't advertised for sale. The mock was just kind of hanging out in the guy's shop collecting dust. So we made the deal and here it is. As you can see, this thing was last on the trail in the winter of 2018, which wasn't that long ago. Now it was parked because the engine started to have some problems. It got really hard to turn over. And when you did turn it over by hand, you could feel like a metal on metal, grindy, scrapey feel going on in there. It was really ugly. So this thing was not a runner when I bought it. The deal also came with an entire second Mach-Z in 1998. But as you can see, some assembly may be required. Now it's actually a little too far gone and picked over to come back to life, but there's still a lot of good parts here. Lucky too, because that scraping sound that was coming out of this motor turned out to be the stator, but luckily enough, there was one in the spare engine from that other sled. So changed it out, swapped some wires around, put a new Deutsch connector on, and the SCSI came to life and it ran good. Well, sort of good. With the engine running, we cleaned it up a bit and started on some general maintenance. Nothing special, we just greased it, changed the chain case oil, replaced a couple of bogey bearings, and then ran a good eyeball over everything. The old girl isn't perfect, but she should be a good runner. Basically, it's all there with only a couple of things that uh, need to be addressed right now. Number one, the front bumper is faded and already cracked, and it's missing the hood hold down thingy, rubber things back here. So, I had to make an order to Kimpex. This stuff is purely aesthetic, but being broken and missing was annoying me, so I had to change them out right away. 
but I don't think this is the last of the parts from Kimpex to get delivered to the shop because they've got a bunch of stuff I'll need to breathe reliable new life into the SCSI. So I did go for a quick burn around the shop on this thing the other day, and it has the dreaded triple cylinder bog when you get on the throttle. Now it could be in the clutches, but I also bet that rave valves are pretty gummy on this thing. So that's a couple of jobs I'm gonna have to do real soon. Right now though, I'm gonna go scavenge that carcass over there because there's a few things I like. It's got yellow grill covers and those skis look way better than these ones. So I'm gonna go shopping over here first. STV's pro tip of the day is brought to you by Yamaha. If you drive an old piece of junk like this one, not only are you a true snowmobile enthusiast, chances are you're also going to have to tow it. So Yamaha's pro tip of the day is all about towing and one crucial thing you need to remember, and that is to remove your drive belt. And the reason for that is pretty simple. When you're towing your sled down the trail, the secondary is going to keep rotating. And if your belt is still in place, it's going to be dragging your drive belt over your primary, wearing it out, which is ultimately going to cost you more money to fix. Don't go away, because after the break, we're arriving at the Vintage Collection. STV is brought to you by Motovan, for the love of power sports. So here's what I know about this collection. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. There's over 120 sleds, and they're all for sale. So we're about to meet Kevin, the owner of this. And uh, one thing's for certain, looking around, I'm glad I left my checkbook at home. Hi, Jeff. Am I in the right place for a collection of snowmobiles that are going to be sold? Well, we got uh, what you see out front here. A yeah. Separate uh, collection, and uh, we have a another collection in the back. We got 120 sleds back there. 120. Yeah. Well, Tell me about these ones. These are just kind of other sleds you got for sale? <clears throat> these are ones we selected and, uh, and we're a little closer to going, you know, ready for the snow. So yeah. this one here, we painted a hood up and had a seat recovered and, and give that it looks, a tune up. That so. looks great. And I am kind of partial <clears throat> to the old Olympics and the, they look pretty good. This is an unrestored, very nice condition, 69 Olympic. Yep. Runs like a top, original seat on it and everything. It's, uh, wow. Well, as Hard much as I like these things, I'm not here to look at these. I'm here for the 120 snowmobiles you oh, okay. got. Okay, sure. So, whereabouts are they? Well, they're just down the backyard there. I keep them in the back there. You can't really see them from here, but I, we could take a walk down if you like. If you want to check That'd them out? That'd be perfect. Let's go for a walk. All right. Sure. Follow me. These are for sale, eh? Every one of them. Oh, my gosh. I'm really glad I didn't bring my checkbook. <laughs> There is a lot of sleds here. <laughs> Quite a few, 120 in total. Wow. Um, anything that's got like running engines in them or are they all pretty much like deep restore machines? There's a, there's a good handful of them that have uh, engines in that roll over. Uh, most of them uh, will need some attention to get running. Uh, I got some quite rare ones too. Yeah, I'm um, seeing like some, some big names. Like we got Motoski here. We've got obviously the Olympics, the Elans, there's mm -hmm. some boa skis, like, and then... Hey, check this one out. This is a Fox Trax. A if Fox? You, I've fox never heard track. of a Fox. You ever hear of that one? This is a rare piece. I've never seen one before. This is, uh, has a, an engine in it that has electric start. The body <laughs> on it is absolutely rust free. You know, that's one that would restore fairly, fairly reasonable. Yeah, and a, right next to an Alouette as well. There's a, there's, that's a vintage good name. Alouette that just needs an engine. It's complete to put an engine in that one and go. Now, you're trying to sell the whole collection, so you want somebody to come in and buy everything. Ideally, I would like to sell them all one lot. Maybe somebody wants to uh, restore them and maybe sell off what they don't want. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a full-time job to, to maintain, look after these. Yeah. And, I don't really have the time outside my day job to restore anything, so my brother and I were partners on this and we had a discussion that uh, maybe we'd like to see if somebody wants to buy the whole lot of them and 
I, I mean, I could totally see a snowmobile salvage or recycling yard that, that specializes in old stuff. I mean, the, this is a gold mine in here. Now, what are you asking for the whole, the whole lot? Well, based on 120 sleds, we have an asking price of 30,000. Mm -hmm. You know, we're... Which, which sounds like a big number, but when you drill it down, it's... Somewhere what? around $225 a sled on average. And I get looking around, there's a gold mine. I mean, Fox snowmobile aside, there's a lot of parts here that if a machine was say beyond salvaging, as far as restoring, uh, restoring it goes, there's still a lot of parts that are valuable oh, on these things. Tons of parts. I mean, like the 65 motor ski and it, it can be restored or you can sell parts off it. I mean, some of these sleds here with the engines in them, technically, if you part them right down to nothing, you'd probably get a thousand bucks on them apart. Yeah, because what, what would a hood be worth? couple hundred bucks at the most couple hundred uh, yeah so that that gets your money back on the sled right away basically sell one major part of it and it pays for the whole sled <laughs> a lot of them can be restored though like i mean i just hate to see them go for parts like a lot of them are fixable there's, and, there's a lot of history here yeah once they're gone they're gone right so don't crush them restore them exactly that's my model Meeting Kevin to talk about his collection is pretty cool. Seeing 120 old sleds all for sale in one spot is amazing. Now one thing's for certain, looking around at some of this old iron has really got me thinking that I need to ride something with leaf springs on it and pretty soon. Anyways, that'll have to be for another show because right now we've come to the end and until next time on Snowmobiler Television, may your bogies always spin free. STV is brought to you by CKX. Wear your passion. Schaefer's. Specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Ready to get away? 